Close your eyes and imagine a short man with gray and white hair that sticks up off his head and grows in all directions. He has a big mustache and wears a coat that is rumpled, pants that are short, and socks that don't match. But he has a kind smile on his face and deep, thoughtful eyes. This is what Albert Einstein looked like. And it might be easy to judge him by his funny appearance, but Einstein is one of the most famous scientists of all time. And many of his big ideas changed the world. But where did Albert Einstein come from? What was his life like? Listen closely, because it all starts in Ulm, Germany, on March 14, 1879, when Albert was born. Albert was quiet and very shy as a child. It took him longer to say his first words than most kids. His parents thought this meant there was something wrong with him. They took him to the doctor, but the doctor said everything was just fine. As a child, Albert liked to play by himself. He played with blocks and built towers of cards. He was very curious and often sat and just daydreamed. His parents thought this meant he had some kind of problem, but really he just liked to sit and think and dream and make things on his own. Albert also liked to play the violin. Often he and his mother played together. Albert's mind was always imagining and wondering about the world around him. He went to school, but wasn't learning the things that interested him, so he started searching for answers on his own. He read and found many of his answers in books, and by asking others. His parents began to see how curious and bright he was, and appreciated his talents, even though he was quiet and shy. In high school, Albert struggled in school. Kids had to sit perfectly still, wear uniforms, and march in line. If they asked questions, they were punished. His teachers told his parents he'd never do anything useful in life because he was so disobedient by asking questions and speaking out of turn. These years were very frustrating for Albert because he was curious and wanted to learn. Math was one of his favorite subjects. His parents found a book about geometry, the study of shapes, and he taught it to himself. Eventually, Albert was told to leave his school because he refused to stop asking questions and wouldn't blindly obey his teachers. He moved with his family to Italy and there spent his time hiking in the mountains and learning on his own. He read about great scientists and astronomers like Copernicus and Galileo who had great ideas. But because their ideas were different than what was believed by most people, they were treated poorly. Albert understood these scientists because he felt like he was being treated the same. In Italy, he wrote his first scientific paper, but it received very little attention because he was young and no one thought someone his age would have great ideas. It was also there he decided to move to Zurich, Switzerland to study physics. There he loved the Swiss people and his new college. He was able to ask tough questions and talk about them with his classmates. There he met a woman named Maleva, who was also a big thinker. They enjoyed their time together and were later married. In Switzerland, Albert started working at the patent office. When someone comes up with an idea for a new invention, they drop the plans and get a patent, which means no one else can take their idea. Albert's job was to read all about the new inventions and approve them. He enjoyed his job and was able to work so fast that he could take off early and spend time hiking and thinking. These were some of Albert's happiest years. So many marvelous ideas came to him at this time. He started writing scientific papers about his ideas and published five of them. These included big ideas about such things as space travel and electricity. Albert was known for wearing the same wrinkled clothes every day and didn't comb his hair, so it stuck up all over the place. He liked to spend time deep in thought rather than taking care of himself. People began to know him for his big ideas and recognized him for his funny appearance. One of his big ideas was called the Theory of Relativity. This idea was that all things move at different speeds except for light. Think about how, as a car passes, it's moving at a different speed as it drives by. But if you're inside the car, it doesn't appear to be moving at all. So speed is relative to where you are. Another example is that the Earth is flying around the Sun and spinning at incredible speeds. But because you're standing on the Earth, it doesn't appear to be moving at all. Another of Einstein's big ideas was that not only are the planets moving around the sun, but the sun is moving through the galaxy as well. It just doesn't appear to move because our planet is moving around it. 
Some funny things about Albert is that even though he was a scientific genius, he was often absent-minded, which means he forgot simple things. For example, often when he went out, he forgot his keys, lost his bags, and forgot to eat. He was so focused on what went on in his wonderful brain that he often didn't consider what was going on around him. He found simpler ways to live his life so he could focus all his energy on thinking. Another example is he wore the same clothes every day and only buttoned his top button because it took less time and energy. He often wore socks that didn't match, his clothes were rumpled, and his hair stuck up all over the place. But his fans loved it, and people all over the world talked about this brilliant, quirky genius. Albert's next job took him back to Germany, but over the years, he and his wife were growing apart. He was so busy being a professor and speaking around the world that he didn't give Maleva and his children the time they needed. Maleva decided not to move, and they divorced. Albert admitted he was not always a good father, and chose writing his papers and teaching over his family responsibilities. While Albert was living in Germany, World War I started. He was sad to see soldiers marching down the street, because he knew what war did to people. He refused to support the war, and the leaders of Germany were upset at him. He could have gone to jail, but he stood up for his beliefs anyway. When World War I ended, Albert was very happy. In Germany, Albert met a woman named Elsa. They grew close, and she spent her time taking care of him, making sure he ate and shaved and didn't lose his keys. Eventually, they were married. Albert loved Elsa, and she loved him too. By this time, Albert was so popular, it made his life difficult. You might think being popular is a great thing, but for some people who are very famous... You can't walk anywhere without people talking to you or wanting a picture or asking for your autograph. Albert loved being alone, so this was very hard for him. He was offered a lot of money to speak and do other things, but he refused. For him, his research and his ideas were more important than money or fame. Sadly, new problems began in Germany. Albert Einstein was Jewish, which is a race and religion. Many Jews who lived in Germany wrote to Albert and asked him to defend them because they were being treated badly. Their shops were taken from them, and they were often beat up by non-Jews. The Nazis, who had taken control of Germany, falsely blamed all their problems on the Jewish people. For this reason, many Jews started leaving Germany. Albert spoke out against the Nazis and refused to leave, even though his life was at risk. Adolf Hitler, the powerful leader of the Nazis, said Albert was a spy, and eventually Albert realized it was too dangerous for him to stay. He and Elsa moved to the United States, and he became a professor at Princeton University in New Jersey. Albert's years at Princeton were very hard. He was sad to see what was happening to the Jews in Germany. Then sadly, Elsa died. Albert often kept to himself and played his violin. He also didn't have as many big ideas as when he was younger. One of Albert's most famous ideas was an equation, E equals mc squared. It basically said that all things are energy. Even things like the hard walls around you or your body are mass and they're energy too, but just in a different form. He also had the idea that if an atom could be broken, it would cause a huge explosion called a nuclear explosion. He worried that the Nazis might create a nuclear bomb and use it against the United States and her allies. Even though he hated the idea that such a weapon would ever be used, he wrote President Roosevelt and told him that the United States must create the bomb first. Eventually, the United States did create the atomic bomb and used it against its enemy, Japan. For the rest of his life, Albert wondered whether he should have ever shared his ideas about a nuclear bomb. But he also thought the consequences of the Nazis making it first would be even worse. After World War II ended, Einstein spent many years speaking out against atomic bombs. The United States and Russia had made thousands of them, and it made the world a very dangerous place. Albert Einstein spent the last years of his life growing old while living in Princeton, New Jersey. His hair was now white and grew in all directions. He was still a quirky and funny sight to see with his rumpled, mismatched clothes. He continued to play his violin and go on walks around his home. He often stopped to help people in need or invited them into his home. He was a very kind, gentle person who had changed the world with his ideas, but didn't care about money or being famous. 
He just wanted the world to be a peaceful place. On April 17, 1955, Albert Einstein passed away while thinking through a problem and writing equations on a piece of paper. To his last day, he was a thinker. Spend a moment thinking about what it was like to be Albert. When he was young, he loved to go on walks and observe the world around him. He saw everything through the eyes of wonder and curiosity. The world to him was an exciting, mysterious place. He loved to understand how it worked and dreamed about how the parts he didn't understand might work. His imagination led to some of his amazing ideas. You can wonder too. Remember in the times when you're bored that it's okay to be bored. Say it out loud. It's okay to be bored. When you're bored, you can take a deep breath and look closely at the world around you. It's the perfect chance to see things with new eyes.